but these were, will be working on the long term, these will be working on the short term, so we were looking for something that might be working in between. Um, and we came up with a, with a uh, small molecule to kill plasma cells. So this is a kind of immune cell. Um, th this is the factory for antibodies. So this is what you see here is the nucleus and a lot of ER, endoplasmatic reticulum. And in this endoplasmatic reticulum, the only thing the cell does is producing protein, in this case antibodies. And very fast, they can produce 1,000 antibodies per second, each of these cells. So I mentioned, that that's quite a lot, right? You have to put a complex molecule with all the arms uh, together, and not only one, but stitching together all uh, the 150 kilodeltons of an antibody in uh, thousands of a second. So what we tested was a small molecule, which is called Rotosimib, and tested if that could kill the plasma cells. How does it work? Um, it's actually affecting the, the proteasome, it inhibits the proteasome. The proteasome is, uh, is kind of the recycling factory of your cells. So you can imagine that your cell all the time make protein, but how is it degraded? It's also important. If you make something, you also at some point have to clean up, and that's what the uh, proteasome does. It is uh, degrading all the misfolded antibodies. And if you use this, this compound, this system doesn't work, and then the cell will accumulate all kind of misfolded antibodies and eventually die. And the process in which it dies <coughs> is caused by a term called unfolded protein response, and the cell, the plasma cell in this case, will go to apoptosis. Um, again, this is a drug that is used in, in multiple uh, myeloma. I think cancer, I forgot in the list of four important uh, disease mechanisms, um, so I think we should add a fifth one. This cancer. Um, this is the model that we used, and I think this is important for the, also the practical model. We started off with the electric organ of this fish. Well, this is an example of where you can really sense something is, is the, uh, not with your eyes but with your feeling, because this fish can produce when you touch it 2,000 uh, volts, no, 200 volts. Sorry. Uh, so this will really kill its prey. And if you're unlucky, it will uh, target also you by making an electric uh, current. Basically, what it uses for making that is acetylene receptors in a muscle-like organ, which is full of uh, synapses. And each of the synapses will make a small current by letting ions through. And if you stack them on top of each other, all these synapses, you have got an electric organ that can really make a very high current and a very high voltage. So it's a source for us for acetylene receptors. And we purify that and inject it into uh, rats in this case. You can also use other animals. And what the, the animals then do, they will mount an immune response. So this is a kind of vaccination, or an immunization, I should say, where the immune response will be direct against the acetylene receptors. And these uh, antibodies will then degrade acetylene receptors, not only from the, this fish, but also their own. So this is a way of, uh, in, a, in an animal model, to induce an autoimmune response. It's very dangerous potentially. If, you, if the same thing was happening to me while I'm doing this, I could also get an autoimmune response. People have done this in monkeys and they really die. So it's a very potent immunogen and uh, it's a very uh, robust model for that reason. And in this model, this WIXIS, um, we tested if this uh, substance was working. In biomedical research, it's always important uh, to understand you can either treat a disease or uh, prevent a disease. Most of what can be done in the lab would be to, to prevent a disease because it's easier than to treat, as you know. But we wanted to test if it's also possible to treat. So we started with the treatment of the drug after onset of the disease. Then the most important thing that we wanted to know if the autoantibody titers can be uh, reduced. So you see here the time, over a uh, period of eight weeks, uh, the autoantibody levels go up, starting at, at about four weeks, to a very high level, and a lot of these animals will then uh, also die, as I will show it to you in a moment. But the drug will really uh, was able to prevent that. And what we're going to, to do tomorrow is to, I'm going to show you how to measure uh, in an ELISA 
the, the antibody titers. In this case, that's not what we're going to talk tomorrow, uh, is the, uh, we measure the autoantibodies. We can discuss this, we're not going to do it. Um, <coughs> but, uh, ah, it's going to be late. But the uh, total antibody levels in the end. So it was, antibodies are produced by these cells, again, a, B cell, uh, a plasma cell, the lot of ER. And what happens when you inhibit the proteasome is this kind of thing. This cell is a cell going into apoptosis. I'm not sure if it's really apoptosis. Anyway, it, it, it's going to die uh, with a cell uh, death mechanism that we don't completely understand. Yet. It's, uh, it's complicated. It's a big vacuole that we see. And the next thing is that they're gone. And you can also count those cells. Another way of quantifying is just counting. And uh, we saw that the number of these plasma cells were reduced a lot. Um, this is something um, I gave you the, uh, the protocol of. Yeah. What are titers? Titers is, is like levels. Okay. So it's uh, the, the amount. Um, uh, that's a synonym for amount. These are named after the default. So in, in normal animals, they have in their blood, and also we have a similar level of uh, antibodies, uh, seven and a half milligram per millimeter, milliliter. So in, in, in human, it's the same concentration, we have, or roughly the same concentration, we have around uh, 15 uh, milligram per milliliter IgG. It's quite a lot. Or you could also say 15 grams per liter. So that's really a, an amount, if you had, had a liter of uh, plasma, uh, that really amount that you could really see. Also means is much higher, it's 50. But this is very substantial. And this drug reduced this amount by 50%. So we measured this with the ELISA protocol that I gave. And the next step, of course, is what happens if we don't take animals? What happens if we take human cells? And we are in the fortunate position that we have human cells. We have uh, B cells from the thymus from patients, because the patients have their thymus removed. It's a long story, I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, this is uh, tissue that is taken out from them, it's not used further, and we get it for research. And um, well, the, the reason is very simply, it's believed to stop the autoimmune response. It's not really working, it might work, not very clear, but they take it out just to be sure, because you don't need it when you're adult. It's a big operation, but no further consequences. So the thymus comes out, the thymus does contain some plasma cells, and what we try to do at the moment, and it seems to work, is to test if this drug, botulinum, is also killing the human plasma cells. So what we need to do, and that's the next step in our research, we're already doing it partly, and I want to do the same step with you, is to transform this protocol from the red immunoglobulins to uh, human immunoglobulins using cells from humans. So we're going to put human cells like these, no, not, not like this one, like these into cultures, measure how much immunoglobulins they produce, and compare that to the amount when we add the bottles to them. Is that clear or is it questions? So I have some first results. And which I'm going to show to you later because I need to work them out. But I'm going to use the next, are we, are we doing time-wise? Yeah, we have time. But let's make a break, because yeah. I think I like. Five minutes break? Yeah, sure.